Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as Bitcoin is now at $59,000. Also, breaking news, over 110 businesses are now building on Bitcoin in Africa, the Bitcoin continent. Let's freaking go. We're also going to be discussing over 50% of the U.S. hedge funds have exposure to the biddies as Bitcoin crushes stocks in 2024, as well as the latest from Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model, predicting a Bitcoin bounce as on-chain indicators coil up. I'll be sharing his outlook, as well as the latest from Arthur Hayes. He says 1930s style debasement to crush savers and pump Bitcoin and the stock market, as well as Ethereum ETF window dressing stage approval in weeks according to the latest analysts. We'll also be discussing breaking news of BlackRock recommending an 84.9% Bitcoin allocation portfolio, which would send a Bitcoin price north of $47 million per coin. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. If you're new to the channel, very important to smash those likes and subscribe to the number one daily Bitcoin pod and be sure to hit the bell icon to turn on all notifications. That way you get notified each and every day when we go live. Uh, today is pod episode number 1689. I'm your host, JV, and it's July 3rd, 2024, Independence Day tomorrow, Bitcoin BTFD opportunity, sub 60 Gs, baby, right now at 59,700, 2100% discount count on the day. Let's freaking go. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. You can see the entire market back in the red. Currently correcting. Bitcoin holding its own, only down 3.4% of the day. Ether down 4%. Solana down 8%. XRP down 4%. And AVAX down 7%. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The Bitcoin dominance is 533 Percent, And let's check out the total crypto market cap sitting at $2.2 trillion with Bitcoin market cap at $1.17 trillion. And checking out the top 100 gainers for the past 24 hours, really not much. We have WorldCoin up 3%, Leo up a half a percent, and ZK up less than a quarter of a percent as the majority of the cryptos are correcting and in the red. But let me know, fam, which particular alts, if any, are you most bullish on for this particular bull? Holla. And checking out the crypto bubble to get a visual perspective on the day. Virtually 100% of the top coins correcting and in the red. Zooming out on the monthly, safe to say roughly 95% of the market correcting and in the red. Only a handful in the green and pretty substantial losses all around like Gala down 45%, ENA down 53%. Uh, even the meme coins like Bonk down 34%. Uh, we have Stark down 50%. So again, pretty substantial losses. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. We're currently rated a 50, which is dead in the middle. Yesterday was a 51. Last week, a 46. And last month, a 73 in greed. So there you have it my crypto fam. But yeah, without further ado, let's check out some technical analysis, aka astrology for the broskies. A, eh? uh, The Bitcoin price fell below 60 Gs, the psychological mark on July 3rd, threatening to prolong the current price consolidation as Mt. Gox potentially starts releasing 9 billion worth of BTC. And quick shout out uh, to Grant Noakes. He just gifted 10 memberships to, of the channel to the following JBZ, Robbie Kaiser, DNA Noonan, BTC Palm Beach, Louise Iris, Chico in a Van, Wealth Ranger, uh, Jeremy Ragsdale, and uh, Mark Frivas, as well as Midwest Picker and Stress Free VIP. You've all been blessed and hooked up on behalf of Grant Noakes. He says, happy birthday, America. I second that, happy birthday, America. Big day tomorrow, celebration, holiday, July 4th, Independence Day, let's freaking go. We greatly appreciate your support, uh, Grant. That's very kind of you, and welcome to all the new members of the channel. We greatly appreciate y'all. But anyways, back to our uh, 
FTA here. Bitcoin fell 4% in the past 24 hours leading up to 10.30 a.m. to a local bottom at 59.6, which is right where we're currently at. And Bitcoin is now down roughly 2% in the week, according to Coin Market Cap. Here, looking at the one-day chart. I'll be pulling up the live charts here in a moment. Stay tuned. The Bitcoin price has been in a downwards trend since June, uh, logging nearly a 18% decline during the second quarter of 2024. Investors have been eagerly anticipating a breakout above that 70,000 mark to pave the way forward towards all-time highs, but losing the current 60,000 support could mean a longer price correction. So the question on everyone's mind, did Mt. Gox start repaying the creditors? Let's discuss it. Bitcoin's decline below 60 Gs may be attributed to the potential start of the Mt. Gox creditor repayments expected early July. The defunct crypto exchange may have started repaying creditors based on the Bitcoin transfer volume chart for tokens last moved during the past seven to 10 years shared by Charles Edwards at Capriole Investments, the founder of Digital Ad Yep, Capriole. Uh, here's what he wrote. The entire history of this chart has disappeared because an enormous sum of Bitcoin moved on chain. 10x more than the previous highs, 9 billion, but by who? Mount Gox, it looks like those distributions really are coming. And I also want to give a massive orange shout out to Chandy. She just gifted a $20 super. So I greatly appreciate that. She said, play the theme song and dedicate to Jen's daughter. You got it. So as soon as the TA is done, I'm playing the official theme music dedicated to Jen's daughter 100 and we thank you chandy it matches the hat it matches the jersey bitcoin orange for the win let's freaking go anyways yeah so shout out amari uh, jennifer's daughter more than 9.4 billion worth of bitcoin is owed to approximately 127,000 mount gox creditors who have been waiting for over 10 years to recover their funds this could mean that many investors will cash out after a decade of untouched profits however the 9 billion from mount gox could be absorbed by the institutional inflows to the u.s based spot bitcoin etfs the ETFs have amassed over 52 and a half billion worth of the biddies since they launched in January. That was on January 11th, according uh, to Dune. As you can see here with the Bitcoin ETF net flows, now a whale or large Bitcoin holding entity may have caused the Bitcoin price drop below that 60,000 psychological level for sure. An unknown whale sold 180 million worth of the biddies within three minutes, an extremely high amount to be sold at market value in such a short period of time. Now we have popular industry watcher uh, Zahir who discovered the large sale based on the chart below. You can see here in your screen, contributing to the price decline. Another unknown whale has deposited 1,700 biddies worth over 168 million to Binance or Binance as Miss Yellen calls it, during the past 24 hours, according to Look on Chain. The biggest whale transfers to the world's largest crypto exchange suggest the entity is looking to sell and lock in them profits locked and loaded. And in breaking news, over 110 businesses are now building on Bitcoin in Africa, the Bitcoin continent. You can see that right here from Ghana to Cameroon, et cetera, Ethiopia, Kenya. We also know that there is a Bitcoin mining hub being started started by Russia as well in Ethiopia. So mass adoption in Africa. Let's freaking go. Now let's pull up some of the live charts here for you guys uh, for our TA segment. Uh, you should be able to see here on your screen. You can see right now, this is brought to you by TradingView via Coinbase. This is the one hour chart. We'll check out the action and then we'll zoom out. They say when in doubt, just zoom out. We do have a target uh, in the green sitting at 61.8. And then we do have a couple of bottom targets sitting around 58. And then we have a very low target sitting at 57 right here on the one hour chart. Let's zoom out, check out the four hour chart real quick. And here you can see we have a big fat target in the red sitting at 73.5, which would take us on the cusp of price discovery, which is the current all-time high of roughly 73.8. We do have a rising wedge formation breaking out here on the four-hour chart. And we also do have a bottom target you can see in the green sitting at $57,600. Let's zoom out a little further and go to the one-day chart. And the two indicators you always see on the screen is the RSI relative strength index, as well as the MACD. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of action happening here too. We got a lot of targets. This is the daily uh, chart. We have a bullish pennant sitting at 106,000, six figure milestone send it. We also have a red target at 72.9, 
taken us on the cusp of price discovery. And then we have the two south targets, one at 53.6 and another at 47.7. Now we're gonna check out the one week chart and then we'll check out the one month chart and then we'll play some theme music for Amari. Here we go. We do have a bullish pennant breakout on the weekly chart. Looking bullish as all hell if you're to ask me. And then we also have another target which is a bullish pennant at 106,000. So there you have it, yo. I mean, roughly 88 and 106,000, two bullish targets on the weekly chart. And now let's zoom out to the monthly chart. And we just got a monthly close a few days ago, right? For the month of June. You can see here, also looking very bullish uh, to me. We did have a very small red candle, but so itty bitty. If you look previous to the most recent months, we did have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green consecutive green monthly candles, followed by a little red, a little green, a little red, and it looks like a little red. So there you have it. Uh, crypto fam, let me know uh, how you feel regarding the Bitcoin price action and the chartage. Uh, anyways, fam, let's continue moving because I got a lot to share with you today as always. Uh, here's the latest uh, headline here. Over 50% of US hedge funds have exposure to Bitcoin as Bitcoin crushes stocks in 2024. That's right. Over half of the top American hedge funds have disclosed exposure to newly launched spot Bitcoin ETFs in a year. And keep in mind, they just launched uh, roughly six months ago, not even six months, on January 11th, as Bitcoin has significantly outperformed major stocks and indexes. Data from investment firm River reveals that 13 out of the top 25 United States hedge funds have owned Bitcoin ETFs by the end of quarter one of 2024. Notably, amongst these is Millennium Management, which had 27,263 BTC, worth $1.69 billion, making up about 2.5% of the total assets under management worth $67.7 billion. And here it has it right here, Bitcoin ETF exposure for the top 25 hedge funds. You can see ranking number one, Citadel Investment Group. Interesting. Then we have Bridgewater's Associates. I believe that's Ray Dalio's company. Then we have Millennium Management, Mariner Investment, AQR, and the list goes on and on. So we got quite a lot of exposure right now, family. Other significant players include Schoenfield Strategic Advisors with 6,700 biddies and 0.72 Asset Management with almost 1,100 biddies. In contrast, some top hedge funds such as Bridgewater Associates, AQR Capital, and Baliazny, however you pronounce this ish, uh, have yet to invest into the Bitcoin ETFs. Interestingly, Bitcoin's growing acceptance coincides with a rise in the cash reserves across... <clears throat> U.S. companies. Notably, the cash or the cash equivalents held by corporations reached a record high of $4.11 trillion quarter one of this year, according to an analysis by Treasury advisory firm Carfang Group. Oh, uh, pretty interesting. Some, if not most of these companies, namely Reddit, Semler Scientific, J.P. Morgan, everyone's least favorite bank, Wells Fargo and others have allocated a small portion of their cash reserves to Bitcoin, or Bitcoin ETFs means they have exposure one way or the other. This trend indicates that the U.S. firms, including hedge funds and corporations, have become more confident in treating Bitcoin as a viable asset for diversification and hedging against traditional market risks. Wall Street's interest in Bitcoin grows further as the crypto fares better than the top stocks and stock indexes. Notably, Bitcoin returns in the first half of 2024 were about 94%. In comparison, the U.S. benchmark S&P 500 index rose 23%, while the Dow Jones Industrial average grew 14% in the same period. Now, even Apple and Tesla stocks underperformed Bitcoin, returning 10 and negative 29%, respectively, year to date. However, NVIDIA, which recently became the world's most valuable publicly traded company, outperformed Bitcoin, rising by over 150% in the first six months of this year due to an ongoing AI boom. Now we have veteran trader Peter Brandt anticipating Bitcoin's relevance growing as a hedging asset, particularly against traditional safe havens like gold. He noted Bitcoin's market cap could rise 230% against gold after 2025. And earlier in the year, ARK Invest annual research report concluded that the institutional portfolios aiming for maximized risk-adjusted returns should have allocated 19.4% to Bitcoin in 2023. And speaking of in insane allocations into Bitcoin or stick around. Our feature story of the day is going to be discussing BlackRock's recommended Bitcoin portfolio allocation of 84.9%. Talk about bullishness. But anyways, family, there you have it. Let me know your thoughts with some of that. Anyways, fam, let's continue. Eh? Next story of the day. Here's the latest from Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow 
model. Here we go. Closely followed quant analyst Plan B believes Bitcoin is gearing up for a big bounce, bounce, come on, bounce, based on the key indicators. In a new strategy session, the analyst, known for popularizing <laughs> the stock to flow, shares that the on-chain data indicates Bitcoin remains in a bull. Plan B looks at the realized price metric, which records the value of all the coins in a given time frame at the price they were last transacted on chain, divided by the number of the Bitcoin in circulation. He says that he expects a bounce from the five-month realized price level, which currently sits at around 65 Gs, baby. Quoting him here, this light blue line, the five months realized price has always served as a support line in the bull markets. So Bitcoin rarely goes below this line. It sticks to that line, actually. And the same has been true for the last couple of months. So right now, Bitcoin sitting a little bit below that line is very interesting. I expect it to bounce, bounce, come on, bounce from this five month realized price up. I expect a bounce from that 65,000, but we'll see. Let me know if you agree or disagree with plan B. He's also watching the RSI, which is another indicator we commonly cover here, known as the Relative Strength Index, a widely used momentum indicator, which aims to determine if an asset is overbought or oversold. He believes the RSI this cycle will reach the peak levels of the prior cycles. Quoting him again, in my opinion, there will be no diminishing returns. There will be exponential returns. Send it. And we will see. RSI values above 80 again, like in 2013, like in 2017, and in 2021. So time will tell. So there you have it. And if you want to watch this analysis by Plan B himself, check the show notes below the video in the description. So there you have it, yo. Let me know your thoughts surrounding uh, some of that analysis with a bounce from 65, like a coil spring. Let's get it. But anyways, yo, uh, next story of the day. Uh, let's continue where we left off here. Our next headline reads, 1930 style debasement to crush savers and pump Bitcoin and the stock market. According to the BitMEX founder, Arthur Hayes just blaze. BitMEX co-founder Arthur Hayes just blaze thinks upcoming fiat currency debasement will drive out the price of the biddies and the stocks. And a new analysis, crypto veteran says he is confident in the economy, which is the new inflationary cycle and Bitcoin will regain it's mojo. Oh, snap. Bitcoin's going to regain its mojo. Hayes cites projections from the Congressional Budget Office, which estimated the U.S. federal budget deficit in the 2024 fiscal year will be $1.9 trillion, the highest amount ever outside of the Novid 19 years, uh, quoting him here. There ain't going to be a recession. That doesn't mean a large swath of plebs won't be in dire financial straits. But Pax uh, Americana will chug alone or chug along regardless. I am pointing this out because I believe fiscal and monetary conditions are loose and will continue to be loose. And therefore, hodling crypto is the best way to preserve wealth. I am confident that today will rhyme with the 1930s to 1970s. And that means, given I can still freely move from fiat to crypto, I should do so because the basement through the expansion and centralization of credit allocation through the banking system is coming. The BitMEX co-founder also thinks companies will pump their own stocks using cheap credit, as he shares here. Central bankers created bank reserves by buying bonds, which lowered the cost and increased the amount of credit. In private capital markets, credit was allocated to maximize shareholder returns. The easiest way to juice the stock price is to reduce the float by engaging in buybacks. Companies that can access cheap credit borrow money and buy back their stock. So there you have it, yo. Let me know if you agree or disagree with just blaze Arthur Hayes. But yeah, this headline reads, Ethereum ETFs in window dressing stage. Approval in weeks. Initially, the experts were anticipating yesterday, July 2nd, to get the official approval, meaning launch. However, um, it hasn't occurred yet. We did get the approval a few weeks ago, but they haven't officially launched. So here's the latest. Galaxy Digital's head of asset management believes spot Ether ETFs will be approved in weeks rather than days, but agrees the decision will come sometime in July, which is this month, uh, quoting him here. Look, we've done this before. This is methodical. This is window dressing. The SEC is engaged. Galaxy Digital is one of the eight asset managers with a proposed spot Ether ETF currently under review with the United States uh, SEC. It is collaborating with Invesco on the ETF. We have been doing this for months now. We did it with the Bitcoin ETF. The products are substantially similar. We know the plumbing. We know 
the process. Now, their estimate is largely in line with other ETF analysts. On June 28th, we had uh, ETF analyst Eric Baljunas pushing back his early July estimate for the ETF approvals after the SET, SEC took extra time to get the applicants uh about their S-1 paperwork. Now, a July 2nd Bloomberg report cited two people familiar with the matter, adding fuel to the theory, staying, uh, stating Ether ETF apps have been given until July 8th, which is five days out, to submit updated paperwork to address some of the minor issues. This could be followed by an additional round of filings, they said. Currently, the eight bidders include BlackRock, Fidelity, 21 Shares, Grayscale, Franklin Templeton, Van Eck iShares, and Galaxy slash Invesco. They have already been given the green light to list their shares on their respective exchanges. The issuers now need an approved S1 filing for the Ethereum ETFs to go live for trading, and this is what we're awaiting right now. In a July 2nd research report, K33 Research suggested Ether ETFs would be a golden egg for the Ether price and could even outperform Bitcoin in the first week after it goes live. The analysts uh, Vessel Lunde and David Zimmerman expect Ether to stumble immediately following the launch of the ETFs, but noted that, much like what happened with Bitcoin, inflows to the funds would likely bolster the Ethereum price. So there you have it. Yo, let me know your thoughts. Do you think we will get the ETFs uh, going live for Ethereum, the spot that is officially this month of July. What's your expectations? What's your predictions? Any of you bullish on that? Holla, let me know. Do you think this is a big uh, W for the industry? Do you think this will help pump the price action so we can return to price discovery? Let me know your feedback. Do you think it'll be a nothing burger? I'd love to know your thoughts. Now let's dive into our featured story of the day. The largest asset manager in the world in which is BlackRock is recommending a portfolio Bitcoin allocation strategy of 84.9%, which can potentially send Bitcoin soaring, skyrocketing to $47 million per coin. So let's break this baby down. And I actually want to start with this infamous tweet. Uh, shout out to the uh, internet gods today. It worked in my favor. So yeah, I tweeted this uh, back in November of 2023. So this was like a little bit ago. But anyways, with BlackRock allocating their optimal portfolio allocation into Bitcoin of 84.9%, according to their very own research study released in 2022, that will send the Bitcoin price to $47 million dollars per coin. And here's Samson Mao breaking down some of the math. He says the math checks out. Bitcoin is going to 47 million. And that was based on this information from Macronaut BTC. So I'm going to read it to you and then I'll read into the story. BlackRock has 9.4 trillion in assets under management, 9.4 trillion times 0.849 for the right Bitcoin position percentage equals 7.98 trillion that BlackRock will need to allocate to Bitcoin to follow their paper. 7.98 times 118 billion of a multiplier equals 941 trillion dollar market cap. So Bitcoin will be about 47 million dollars per coin, which ultimately means it's going up forever, Melda. Anyways, so yeah, July 25th, uh, Blockware's Joe Burnett commented on a 2022 BlackRock report on optimal Bitcoin allocation. Remarkably, the asset manager recommended 84.9% Bitcoin, 9% stocks, and 6% bonds. And here's what Burnett commented. If all the investors follow the BlackRock optimal Bitcoin allocation, Bitcoin will be worth more than 5x the total value of all equities, real estate, and bonds. He speculated that the total global wealth is around 800 trillion today. Bitcoin would be 190 million dollars per coin. Good lord. But yeah, this is coming directly from a research report released in 2022 by BlackRock and I'm going to read you what's highlighted here. Exhibit 4 presents the results starting with a 64 equity bond portfolio which is produced with a risk aversion of y equals 1.5. The optimal Bitcoin allocation is a large 84.9%. The remainder of the portfolio, 15.1% is split 60/40 between equities and bonds. Now I'll read to you the green highlighted section. Although Bitcoin has an extremely large volatility a 1.322, uh, the pronounced positive skewness leads to large allocations and dominates in the utility function. Whoa. So there you go. An economist, Ottaviani, added his sentiment. Sooner or later, it'll be clear for everyone that Bitcoin is a must-have in every 
portfolio. Hence, it's going up forever, Melda. At the time, BlackRock wrote, although Bitcoin has extremely large volatility, the pronounced positive skewness leads to large allocations and dominates in the utility function. Reposting a stock-to-flow model on July 25th, analyst Plan B said that things were in the early stages of a bull market adding the following. Of course, BlackRock wants to buy cheap, but before ETF approval and just before stage two full-blown, bull market. So there you have it. And this was actually right before the ETFs actually went live a couple of months later after um, I shared all that uh, back in uh, November because the ETFs just officially went live on January 11th. So could you imagine? We're not saying that's going to be overnight. So keep that in mind. No one's saying uh, all the asset managers around the world are going to allocate 85% of their portfolios into Bitcoin. But if BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, is recommending that, over time, I think all roads lead to Bitcoin because it's the perfect vehicle to park large amounts of capital or investment. So here's a theory. Maybe the asset managers start with 1% allocation, very minimal, and then let the results speak for themselves. Watch what happens with that 1% allocated into Bitcoin compared to the bonds and the stocks. Bitcoin outperforms everything as it always has. They're going to allocate more. And as the years go by, oh, 1%, way, way too little. 5% sounds better. 10%. 20%. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll have 85% allocation of the total addressable market, that 900 trillion flowing into Bitcoin. And if it did, we're potentially talking about a hundred thousand or a hundred million dollar Bitcoin price, right? No guarantee. This is not investment advice. This show is for entertainment purposes only, but I want to open your mind to the endless possibilities of the fact Bitcoin has no top because fiat monopoly tulip bulb trash has no bottom, and it's all collectively going to zero against Bitcoin. What's the infamous quote? All fiat currency returns to its original intrinsic value, zero. It's all going to zero against Bitcoin. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know your thoughts uh, surrounding that report published by BlackRock, and why do you think they're recommending 85% asset allocation? Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to read as many of the comments out loud. Welcome, family, to the Q&A segment of the live show. I would take 10% of the 47 milli. I know, right? Who wouldn't? I have to pay someone $300 a day to take care of... Oh, man, I missed the comment. Uh, you need more BTC. <laughs> I have a feeling she may have more BTC than all of us here. Just saying. Thinking out loud. Hey, people, forget to leave a like, so do so now. Uh, thank you, Siamano. It does help out tremendously, and we greatly appreciate all the support. You can't not own it. I guess leaving at 50 million in today's purchasing power, when I get my 100 to 500 acres, I won't leave other than the fun time, business time, my choice time, the dream. Amen to that. Black Diamond, what up, Scan? Having animals is hard to find people to watch our dogs go anywhere with us. And the bird is going to my mom's house for the fourth, right on Devon. Uh, what is that? I'm not from the U.S., but Trump is my president. Oh, word. Where are you from, Siamano? Uh, bada boom, bada bing. Holla at your boy. Yeah, exactly what Melda said. Melda the Gray, that is. Uh, crypto stays in America. Enjoy the day. Got to run. Cheers, Greg. We appreciate you tuned in. Shipmate, ahoy, captain, rock, rocking, BTC, representing every day. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Imagine only 21 milli US dollars ever made and no printing. Hmm. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. Poland, uh, Poland representing. That's what's up. He said that the, I've got a ear to hear. Well, you do got an ear to hear. I may be a shark or a whale, but then again, I may not be. People will never know. That is true. And unfortunately, JC did lose all of her crypto she got back then uh, in a uh, boating accident. So it's a shame. Please pray for her and her family. Uh, price discovery right around the corner, says Muhammad. Amen. Jen is busy. She's don't need more work. Uh, amen, Diana. Will Biden step back? Uh, man, what do you guys think will happen with that clown? Do you think he'll be replaced? Do you think he'll stand firm? Let me know. Hard to travel with two cats uh, that eat raw meat only. 
can't leave food out for them. Ah, that sucks. Good morning. Good morning. And Sage, Saga, Alpha Club, repping what it do. Around the corner, price discovery. I am so ready. Are you ready? Shout out, Laser Cat. What it do? If Biden steps back, Michael Obama will be a candidate. Yeah, I mean, Max keeps tweeting, Big Mike, Big Mike, Big Mike. I would not be shocked. Allegedly, Michelle, a.k.a. Big Mike, was pressed with that, and she said she it's not in her blood to run for president. But in my opinion, she he has to do whatever they're told. It's not like they have free will. You know what I mean? In my opinion. Uh and that would work as well as a veteran nonprofit idea. We need to talk more. I don't even know what state you are in. Uh, no, it was a rocket ship. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, JC lost it in the rocket ship accident. That's a shame. Uh, Kamala. Oh, my God. She's so cringe. She's like the worst. I think I'd rather have Biden in there instead of her. Just saying. Just keep dipping all day, a day. Oh, Biden needs to say bye-bye. New York, Finger Lakes area, representing New York. Let's go. Mikey Obama would be sad. First transgender president, though, yo. It'd be right in alignment with the United States transgender agenda. That's for sure. Whatever happened to Joan Rivers? You notice two weeks after she was asked regarding Michelle, a.k.a. Big Mike, and she gave her feedback that we already had the first gay president, referring to uh, Barack and that everyone knows Michelle is a transgender. Two weeks later, she mysteriously died. Is that a coincidence? Let me know your thoughts. Cause that was before it was like mainstream where most people knew. You know what I mean, some people still don't know it to me. It's shocking, but again, to each their own is Gavin Newsom stepping in. That would be awful. I mean, all the candidates are awful. 